Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodds and welcome into this Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to take a look at how to work with complex paths and shapes here in Photoshop rather quickly. And in the interim, we're going to end up creating this Google Chrome logo kind of sort of by accident almost. It's going to cover a lot of the techniques that we want to cover. So I thought, bah, why not? Let's create the Google Chrome logo. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss any Photoshop tutorials, past, present, or future. And uh, with that out of the way, let's jump into Photoshop and check this thing out. Alrighty, here we are in Photoshop, and we're going to begin by creating a new document, 2560 by 1440. I've got the landscape orientation. I'm going to choose to create this. And we're going to come over here and select our ellipse tool right down here. And I'm going to choose to make sure that this is drawing a path, not a shape or pixels. And I'm going to come over here and make sure that I have this set to combine shapes. And then I will click a single time and choose to make a 1000 by 1000 pixel ellipse. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select my alignment options. Make sure I have aligned canvas checked on. I'm going to align the horizontal and the vertical edges. Then I'm going to swing over here and open my paths panel. I'm going to double click on this path and I'm going to name this Chrome, not donut, let's go Chrome ring and hit OK. Then I will deselect the path by selecting anywhere on my paths panel. Click another time and choose to create a 445 by 445 pixel ring. This also I will go and align horizontal and vertical. Now I'm going to double click to name this path. I'm going to name this Chrome Center Color. And then with this path selected, I can just go edit and choose to copy. And then I will select my Chrome ring up here and I will go edit and choose to paste. Now you can see if you take a close look at our paths panel, we have a second ring pasted in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this ring up here using path operations. I'm going to change this to subtract front shape. And you can see what's happened. We've just punched a hole in our chrome ring. Very cool. Next we're going to duplicate this chrome ring by dragging it and dropping it on the new path icon. I'm going to click on this ring and I'm going to name it red. And we want to make sure we select the ring. So we're going to grab our black arrow path selection tool, drag a selection over this thing, and we're going to come up here. We have path operations here. I'm going to choose to merge the shape components. Photoshop's going to say, look, this operation will turn a live shape into a regular path. Continue. To which we're going to say yes. And then we're going to grab the pen tool. Now with the pen tool, we're going to make sure we're drawing a path. And I'm also from the path operations going to choose, going to choose this one right here, intersect shape areas. And I'm going to come right down to around here and I will click. I don't want to add a path or an anchor, excuse me, to the existing path. So I'm going to come down and get as close as I can without adding a path. And then I'm going to draw a shape kind of like this. I'm going to bring it over across this way. And maybe I'll bring it down to right round about here. Something like, something like that I think will work. And then I'll join my path off. Now if we look over here in our paths panel, you can see that the only thing we're preserving is the area where this new drawn path intersects the old Chrome ring that we had. This will be the sort of red shape for our Google Chrome logo. It's probably not exact, but eh, we don't really care about that right here. We can always tweak and adjust. In fact, we could come over here and grab our white arrow direct selection tool and select the anchor point right down here and click and drag it and maybe make it line up a little bit more like it should, just like that. And maybe also out here, We'll just make this guy come across a little bit more flat than he is right now. Something like that I think looks really nice. And now what we'll do is we'll grab our path selection, black arrow again, and drag a selection over everything. And once more we'll come up here and we'll choose merge shape components. And you can see now what we've got is just this little piece of shape in our paths panel, which is just perfect. So I'm now going to repeat this process for what would be the yellow and the green portions of this uh, logo. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the chrome ring and go ahead and draw these shapes. You can see me drawing them out very quickly. The one thing I like to do is draw them a little bit so they're going to be overlapping for sure. So I may be going a little crazy here, but that's fine. I want to make sure that they're overlapping and I'm not having anything that is going to be a gap in the color of my logo. Now that we have that, I'm going to deselect all of my paths. I'm going to create one more elliptical path. I'm going to click a single time. Well, I'm actually going to cancel that. I want to make sure I change my path operations here to combine shapes. I'm going to click a single time here, and I'm going to set this to 375 by 375 pixels. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and align this to the canvas like everything else, vertical and horizontal. And then I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to name it Chrome Center Color Small. Now that we've got our shapes, let's start coloring some stuff in. I'm actually going to drag my paths panel out here so we can always see it and see what we're dealing with and quickly select paths that we need. Because here in the layers panel, what I'm going to do is begin filling stuff in with gradients and then we'll adjust all the layers to get everything properly stacked so it looks good. 
I'm going to select my chrome center small first, and I'm going to fill this with a gradient fill layer. So I'm going to go gradient from my little adjustment layer drop down here. Gradient. I'm going to select the gradient stripe, and I'll select any gradient. Well, preferably a two-handle gradient. And what I'll do is I'm going to set the color stop to the left to 0C, 74BA. I'm going to hit OK. And I'll choose the color stop here on the right. And I'm going to set this one to 83B9. Uh, E4, whoop, E4, there we go. You can see it's just this very nice darker to lighter blue. I'll hit OK. I'll hit OK again. Now let's go ahead and select Chrome Center Color. Also notice, by the way, we're getting additional paths. This is letting me know this is Gradient Fill 1 Shape Path. So we could just call this Center Color. And you can see now Center Color Shape Path. It's just sort of duplicating the path, letting us know this is the vector mask for that shape layer. I'm going to come up here and choose Chrome Center Color. This is the sort of outer ring. I'm going to go down. I'm going to add a solid color layer here, not a gradient. And I'm just going to fill this with white. I'm going to hit OK. Now, obviously, we have an issue here because it's covering up our color. So I'll just drag it beneath the center color layer. And I can name this Chrome Ring Center or something like that. Now, here's where things start to get fun. Let's grab the red shape. And we're going to begin with this. We're going to add a solid color layer here. I'm going to fill it with the color ef 3 d 3, 6. And then I'll hit OK. We probably want to drag this color down underneath the chrome ring center. That's fine. I'm going to select the yellow color uh, path next, and then I will fill a solid color layer here. This one is going to have the color FADA06. I will hit OK. Now, because of the way that this shape is and the way we drew the path, we actually want this color underneath the red because the red has the straight across line the way that it should be. Then we'll go ahead and grab the green path. And we will once more add a solid color layer for this as well. The green that I'm going to use is 5FBD5B. I'll hit OK here. And this also should be dragged beneath the yellow layer. Next, what we want to do is add those cool little shadows. Now, this doesn't really have to do with creating these complex paths, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. So I'm going to select the red layer. By the way, we could name these, but we're not going to for the sake of time. We're going to go Layer, Layer Style, and choose Gradient Overlay right there, Gradient Overlay. Now, I should have mentioned, you want black to be your foreground color. So hit the letter D, and that'll reset your foreground and background colors. Then I'm going to come back into here and choose to add a gradient overlay. Now, I have some very specific settings here for my gradient. Let me just set this back to 100% opacity and select my gradient editor. What I've done in here is I have taken a simple foreground to transparent gradient, just like this, and I've moved the opacity stop here to the 10% location. See that right there? And then I've taken the other transparency stop, and I've met, met it right there at 10% to create this perfectly straight line. I'm going to hit OK. And what we would do here is just swing this, swing this gradient around until it's kind of making the shape we want or, or creating the angle that we want. Now, it seems to have disappeared, so we can actually click out here and just drag. And there the gradient is. It's not quite the angle we want, so I'm going to keep pushing it here. Maybe I'll go like 45 degrees or something like that. I think it would be cool. And then I'll just drag it backward until it creates kind of that perfect sharp shadowed edge that the Google Chrome logo has. And we'll set the opacity here to, I don't know, 10%. You can see we have this nice flat shadow. I'll hit OK. And then we'll add the same shadow here down to our yellow layer. So I'm going to hold down Alter Option, drag the FX icon down there. Now that obviously is not correct. So I'll double click on the FX icon, select that gradient overlay. The opacity is probably fine. The gradient's good. We just need to change the angle and make sure we find the gradient there. So I'll swing the angle around. I'll swing it around some more until we find it. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction there. Now you can see here at about 89, we're, we're losing it. So I'm going to drag it down. All right, that's a little bit too flat. So let's go, let's go up a little bit with it. Maybe something right around 75 would probably be good. Then I'll just drag it to make sure that it's pretty much a perfect point right there where it meets up with the edge of the logo. Opacity of 10 is probably fine. We might want to reduce it to something like 8. That looks good. I'll hit OK. And we'll duplicate this down to the green shape. I'll double click on the FX icon there for the green shape. Select Gradient Overlay. And let's start swinging this around to see when and where we see the gradient appear. And if you don't see it appear much, you can just start dragging in one or the other direction. All right, there it is. There it is. Let's try to swing this around now a little bit. Swing it this way, and we probably need to pull it up. There we are. We're starting to see it there. And what this means is I need to adjust the gradient a little bit in a different direction here. So I'm going to take it back to about maybe about 100 or so, and I'm going to pull it over until I see it. And nope, that's the wrong direction. It's making extreme movements just because of how far kind of zoomed in we are. I need to push it up a little bit higher. 
Let's try like 160 maybe. Let's try 160 for an even number. Nope, 160 is not quite right. Let's take it straight to 175. That looks like that'll be, yep, looks like 175 will be about right. We can just line that up so we get a nice pointed shadow. I think 8% opacity is good as well. It takes a little finessing as you see there. But once we've gone ahead and applied that shadow to these complex paths that we were able to create using shape tools, the path panel, and the pen tool, we are able to very quickly and easily create this really nice looking and realistic looking Google Chrome lookalike logo. And boom, just like that, we have created the finished effect. Looks pretty realistic. We went in and we created that Google Chrome logo like nobody's business. Now, if you did follow along with this tutorial uh, and you enjoyed it, go ahead and tag me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at tutvid. Upload your artwork to Instagram. I would love to see it. Make sure you tag me in the image, not just in the caption though, because in the caption I can miss it because my notifications, I don't know, they're wonky. Whereas the tagged image, I get a whole separate feed for that stuff and I can always make sure I see it and show you some love and let you know that I'm seeing what you're doing out there. So, for working with the pen tool and shape tools and paths and all kinds of path operation, this, that, and the other things, guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.